Okay, back. Got the red snapper. We're going to cook it. It's been seasoned ahead of time, salt and pepper. I'm actually going to sear it skin side down. I get a saute pan very hot. This part I want hot. Using olive oil again. Once I'm going to get this down, as you can hear, it's starting to move. It's starting to sizzle right away. Just lift the fish up a couple times. Just to make sure that it doesn't stick. And I'm just actually going to let it sit there now. Just let it cook. There you go. All I'm doing now is just to make sure that it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the second fillet. Add that in as well. You see me lifting it up. And then just put it back in. And just let it cook now. Alright. Now what I'm going to do is while the fish is searing right here, I'm actually going to go back over here and I'm going to start doing stealing the shrimp. Okay. I was actually talking to the uh, one of my purveyors or fishmongers and was asking about shrimp. These are actually fresh, fresh Texas prawns or fresh Texas shrimp. These come direct from Texas. Uh, they have never been frozen before. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the shell off and I'm going to keep the shell because I'm actually going to add that to the stock that I have on the stove. Just enhancing it a little bit more. As you can see, it still has the head on, but I'm going to take the head off, actually. So just pinch it and pull it and separate it. Reserve that as well. I'm going to take it all the way down to the... I'm going to take the shell completely off. All right? Just lay the shrimp there, and I'm just going to repeat the process. Then what I'll do is I'll show you how we have to actually clean the shrimp. Again, pinch the head. That way I get all of that out. Line the shrimp up here. When you're buying shrimp, they're classified by size. And this particular ones, because they still have the head intact, are sized differently. Generally when you see shrimp, they're like 26, uh, 30s, 21, 25s, U15s. These particular ones are called um, 9 to 12s, which means 9 to 12 of these shrimp are going to make a pound. So I'll do one more for you. Remove the shell. Again, here we go. Yeah. I'm going to line the shrimp up right here. Wipe my hands off gently. Now I'm going to clean it for you. And all you want to do is lay it on a flat surface, make a small incision directly in the middle of its back. And there you see, you want to be able to remove that vein. And generally what I do is I take the tip of my knife and I actually pull it out like that. And all I'll do is I'll go back in again and make sure that I clean that out completely. Again, as you can see, it's completely clean. Now I'm going to add that to the plate because I'm going to actually rinse these off right after I finish. Make the small incision again and again. Make sure that I remove the vein. Which sometimes it's hard to see, but you just have to dig a little bit. Again, make sure that the shrimp is clean. Do the same thing again. And I hear my fish cooking. So I'm just going to do this last shrimp right here. And I'm going to go check on the fish. And this one is looking pretty good. Oh, here you are. Sometimes I say they do hide a little bit. Again, completely clean. And just put that right there. And I'm going to turn my attention back to the fish. Oh, man. This looks beautiful.
Close it down. Flip it. Look at the color there. That is beautiful. Like I said, I didn't move it around too much. Just let it cook. I prefer when you're shearing fish, cook it on the flip side first longer. I'm actually going to take this out of the pan. Huh. Because I don't want to overcook it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gently going to lift the fish out. That's it. Here we go. Perfect. The fish did not get. But more importantly, look at the color. Nice one, Pete. Color that. That's good. As you see, I'm just breaking off some of this excess fish. I'm going to leave it there. Because now what I'm going to do in the same pan, Keeping the, uh, the flame on, we're going to actually quickly, quickly saute the calamari that you saw us prepare earlier. All right? So again, very quickly. Going to add a few pieces at a time. And there it goes, sizzling. See the calamari is curling up. Calamari does not take a very long time to cook. And you can see me. Now the, the water is releasing itself from the calamari. And as you can see, the juices that are in the bottom of the pan, that's going to do wonders for the paella. I'm just going to slide my fish down a little bit. Okay, keep moving the uh, calamari around. As you can see, the calamari is turning a little bit rosy color. Okay, I don't want to cook the calamari too much. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to transfer it to the pan. I mean to the plate, sorry. Slide the fish down a little bit. Because I want to keep those juices there. just reducing in the bottom of this pan it is going to be great all right a few more pieces right here now something else I'm going to mix in here very very quickly is the crab what I have here is pasteurized jumbo lump crab very very small amount I don't have much so that's going to get tossed in at the very end as well okay and you're going to see me just crowd this plate a little bit. It's all right. All right. I'm going to crowd that back here. It's absolutely fine because in a few minutes, this is going all into the same pot. Great flavor. Now, what else I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to add some stock to this. To this very quickly. I'm going to cheat a little bit there. I'm, when I use the, the stock, I'm actually going to strain it, but I'm just going to take a little bit of the stock off the very top, make sure I don't have any, you know, just make it as clear as possible. Just take a little bit. And I'm just going to, now you see what I want to do is, I just want to release the flavors. 